Accounting Equation and Excel. Closing process month number one. Get ready and some coffee because it's time to learn the accounting foundation, the accounting equation using Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there or just build your own worksheet as we go or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook, though, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells. So you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, is where we started with a blank worksheet, but are continuing, in essence, with a template at this time but we will be adding to the worksheet as needed as we go practicing our Excel formatting tools when we do so. Let's go on over to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. In prior presentations, we've been constructing our bookkeeping system using the accounting equation, basically as our trial balance from which we constructed our financial statements, the balance sheet and the income statement, the income statement sometimes called the profit and loss we pulled in beginning balances that we imagined came from a prior accounting system did the startup type of journal entries often necessary the ones needed to get cash possibly an investment from the owner or a loan from the bank so that we can then take that money and invest in things for startup costs needed to generate revenue that being typically property plant and equipment as well as in uh, inventory then we purchased or did our normal kind of transactions making sales and entering uh, expenses now we're at the end of our process for the first month we're not going to do adjusting entries here we're going to do that at the end of possibly a uh, month number two what we've done here is we've got the ending process or our ending point that we then used to construct our financial statements all the way to the right we constructed our financial statements do, 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 do. and so now you will recall that we have in essence the balance sheet which is the accounting equation but then the income statement is kind of part of the equity section of the accounting equation and the statement of equity reconciles the prior balance and the current activity so now if we're going into the new month what we need to do then is close out the income statement so that we're starting in a new income statement or performance statement at zero now a couple things just to realize when we do this uh what what does that entail by the way that the adjusting entry is simply going to be then the balance sheet is going to remain the same on the asset side the expense side but uh, on, i'm sorry the asset and the liabilities but on the equity side of things we're going to close out the income statement and then that's going to go into the equity section into what we're going to say owner's equity for a sole proprietorship if it was a partnership you would have to allocate that amount to the capital accounts if there's five partners five different capital accounts in accordance with their partnership agreement if it was a corporation rolling into retained earnings now you might not be as aware of this if you were to work with accounting software first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like this cpa thinking cap for example cpa thinking cap you see what we did with like with the letters and this cpa thinking cap is not just for cpas either anyone can and should have at least one possibly multiple cpa thinking caps why because based on our scientific survey of five people all of whom directly profit from the sale of these cpa thinking caps wearing this cpa thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey increases accounting productivity tenfold yeah at least yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head. 
allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the Matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey is saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com like a QuickBooks or a Zero, because they try to do that automatically. So what will happen in those softwares is you're gonna tell them your fiscal year end, which oftentimes let's imagine is a calendar year end. And the system is always gonna be calculating your revenue on in essence, an annual basis with regards to the balance sheet type of uh, the reports. So when it makes a balance sheet report, in other words, it'll show you basically the retained earnings or owner's equity account, the closing account on the balance sheet, and it'll show you net income, not for a month, even if you ran the port report on monthly basis, but on a yearly basis. That's what that's going to be the pros and cons of the software trying to help us out so that we don't have to manually do a journal entry to close out the accounts. The sacrifice to do that is that they kind of dump a, an account in here called net income to show you what they're doing. And it's only on a yearly basis. We don't it's not going to show you net income typically on a monthly basis. They close out the books in essence on uh, a yearly basis. So we can still and then therefore run a report on a monthly basis, which will just show us the income for that particular month. Uh, but the closing process that's taking place in the system is usually going to show on the balance sheet kind of on a yearly basis. Okay, so a couple things that are different from what we're doing, what we can do in a two-dimensional kind of system. I'm going to call it two-dimensional on uh, QuickBooks versus a three-dimensional kind of uh, uh, database program in a QuickBooks or a zero, right? So in our case, what well, we need to make a decision, do we want to close things out on a monthly basis, in which case we're going to have zeros going forward and record the next information monthly as it increases. If we were in a database program, I can generate reports deciding which one I want to generate the reports from. I could say generate me a report for the month, or I can say generate a report for two months, the year to date, which would combine them together, or I could say generate an income statement just for the second month. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna close things out on a monthly basis just so we can get an idea of what that looks like, and then we'll do the second month of transactions, and we'll try to see as we do that what is happening between these related accounts on the balance sheet, the equity accounts, and on the income statement, the the whole income statement, and then imagine what's that looking like in a database program that does it automatically, because you need to understand that to see how the reports basically are, are working. So I, this is another area where a lot of bookkeepers, they just don't know this because, because the, the system does it, and the a lot of people will say, well, you don't need to know it because AI or something, right? You don't need to know it anymore. But you have to understand, again, the relationship so that you can you can see what is happening so you can make decisions on it and you can fix problems when problems arise. All right, so let's go on over. It's a pretty straightforward transaction. Let's go on over to our blank tab. And I'm just going to do this as of 1-8. Now, this is another kind of key component or question as to when does the closing transaction take place. So if, you, if, you're, if you're doing it on at the end of the month, this is, let's actually make this uh, on, uh, I'll make it two, one. What am I saying? One, eight, two, one. So it's gonna be at the beginning of the next month. So we're gonna say the month ended here. Now, when the month ends in practice, you would possibly have another couple weeks before you can actually close out the month entirely because you might have to do adjusting entries, which we'll talk more about at the end of the next period. And you might have to do the internal control of the bank reconciliation, which also might end up with some adjusting entries. And then you can basically close out the prior month, meaning make it so no one's reporting to it anymore. You, then you create the financial statements 
and then you basically close out the, the prior month. When do we close out the month as of, however, would be like the end of January, right? The end of the end of the, the last day of the month at midnight, you can imagine. So you can imagine the last date of January, which is equivalent like to the first day of the next month, right? So it's at midnight <laughs> or something like that, right? So that's going to be the idea. All right. So now we're going to say that this is going to be the closing entries closing entry so how are we going to get the closing entry all we need to do is we're going to make all of the income statements zeros because the income statement is the performance statement and in the following month we want to track the performance statement from zero to see the distance we're going in terms of revenue generation and the expenses needed to generate that revenue for one just one month and then again we could add the one month information to the prior month to get a two month total but we just want to see it month by month for our purposes. So all we have to do is, is do the opposite of what's in the account. So sales, I'm just going to put negative of that number, just negating it. Negative of the service revenue, negative of cost of goods sold, and so on. I'll copy that across. So now we come up with a journal entry. This, was, this will come up to net income, 7,228. And so this journal entry is going to be negating or reducing in total by the 7,428. Where are we going to put it? We're gonna put it into the owner's equity, which would be equivalent to the retained earnings if a corporation. So I'm gonna say negative sum. So I'm gonna add it up and flip the sign. That's what I'm, it's gonna sum it up and then make it the opposite sign. So I'll just select all of these items, negative sum. So now the total of this is basically my journal entry, which is just gonna, going to remove all, make all of this zero once we pull the balances down and then net these two together, combining it into the owner's equity uh, account. So let's do that first. And then we also have the question as to whether or not we wanna close out the draws if there was anything in it or the owner's investment, which we'll talk about later. So, so let's put zeros across the rest of the board here. Let's put zeros here, here, and we'll put zeros across the board here. Do, 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 do. Zeros across the board. Let's put an underline underneath it now. So we're going to put an underline here and home tab font group underline. We'll put an underline over here home tab font group underline one more underline here so home tab font group underline and then we'll pull this balance down so let's pull it down and so nothing happened to the the assets nothing happened to liability or to equity everything happened within equity notice that i still have a green zero but it's a little bit different because of rounding that's why it has brackets around it because I say, okay, so then I'm going to say, this is going to be then the balance. Let's pull down the balance, which is going to equal the sum of the prior balance plus the current activity. Nothing happened to the assets. So we're just going to paste that formulas only. Nothing happened to the liabilities formulas only. And then the in this equity section, that's where all the stuff is going down. That's where it's going down at. So there we have it. So now once again, all of the income statement items at zero equity now at the 85,324. And we haven't closed out the owner's investment as of now. So let's copy this down, copy down the formulas. It should just bring down the same balances, which don't change because this is basically the balance sheet account, which combines all the equity into one number we're still at that 153.24, but we are now ready to move forward on the income statement starting from zero. And so once we get done with the second month of operations, we can basically say, okay, this is, this is my net income that our performance statement, we can kind of imagine it as analogous to seeing how far you can drive in a day and you reset the odometer. 
So I drove whatever, 100 miles today. I reset the odometer. I drove 80 miles the next day. That's basically what we're doing here. Revenue and expenses basically always go up. We take net income, revenue minus expenses. We're looking at the first month. How far did we go in terms of revenue expenses and the difference between the two net income in month number one? Start the odometer, reset the odometer. How well did we do in month number two? Now, we could also ask the question, how did we do over month one and two, right? In, in which case you'd add those two up and look at the performance over a two month period. So again, in our system, the closing process is a little bit more difficult to run a report either for a two month period or for just a one month period. Similarly, if it was yearly, it's a little bit difficult if you're doing it manually like this to run reports just easily for one year versus two years versus five years of income statement, right? But if you're looking at software that's a database program, you can basically do that, right? You can say, give me an income statement for just one month. Give me an income statement for two months combined, or give me an income statement comparing one month activity versus the second month activity and show me the difference between the two. All those reports become plausible when you're looking at a database program that can kind of pull the data, the data in. But the general idea is this, right? We're going to close out. Everything needs to still be in balance. The income statement is part of the balance sheet. If we look at it at a monthly basis, we would close out uh, the income statement and and put the other side of it into owner's equity. If it was a corporation, it would be retained earnings. Now, remember, though, in software, the closing process happens automatically yearly for most softwares like a QuickBooks or a zero. So that means you could still run a report for one month versus two months versus three months, a quarter and so on on the income statement. But when you look at the balance sheet, it's not going to close out to retained earnings exactly or to the owner's equity account, but put another account in here called net income. And the net income is always going to be the year to date net income. It's not going to be the monthly net income, which is going to be so that you have to, again, you have to kind of understand that. Uh, otherwise, you're going to, you're going to say, Hey, wait a sec, my net income on the balance sheet that I ran for month number two only does not match the net income that is on the income statement for month number two. Why? Because the way the QuickBooks is working is say, we're going to do the closing process automatically. We're going to show you how it's happening on the balance sheet by putting an income net income number in there. But for us to do that automatically, we have to do it on a yearly closing process or on some closing standard closing process, which makes sense that you would choose a year to do that. So that's just something to know. Now, again, we didn't close out the owner's investments and we don't have any draws yet. Notice that if you're in a book problem, they're going to say the temporary accounts, which is the, the, the name for a book problem or the term we often use for accounts that close out to retained earnings on a monthly and or yearly basis, temporary accounts versus permanent accounts are going to include the entire uh, income statement. Those are all temporary accounts. They close out periodically, but also on the balance sheet, all of the assets and liabilities are permanent accounts. They don't close out. They stay there until, until a journal entry, journal entries change them. But on the, on the statement of equity, on the owner's equity, you've got the draws and the investment draws representing money that the owner takes out of the business which we're going to see possibly in future months more clearly or when we do bank reconciliations, which should be the norm because what should happen if we're a sole proprietor, the business makes money, we get more money in the checking account, we then transfer the money from the checking account to our personal account with a draw so that we can use it for our personal expenses. So, so in the first month of operation, however, the opposite happened we needed startup money in the business in order to buy the property, plant and equipment and the inventory. 
Therefore, we put money from our personal account into the business, something we don't expect or hope to be happening all the time. We happen, we hope it'll be the other way. And we created an equity account called owner investment. Now, sometimes people will put that owner investment directly into the owner's equity. And if that, if you see that, then you just have to be aware of that when you do the financial statement reports. Otherwise, your retained earnings or owner's equity won't tie out from year to year if you don't recognize that. Um, but if you break it out into another account, then you should close that out. We should close this out on on a periodic basis, monthly or yearly. I'm not going to here because I'm going to let it lie, which is often what a lot of people do. And that's fine too in the software because you just need to recognize that then this owner's investment represents the owner's investment over the life of the company versus just one month or one year. It's a permanent account. Therefore, if you want to close it out as you would in a book problem, typically you would have to do it manually. The draws like similarly would be draws over the life of the company if you don't close them out or you can choose to close them out with a journal entry periodically at the end of the year uh, or the end of the month. So I'm gonna let them stand uh, basically as is at least for now and one more quick note if this was a corporation then this owner's equity would be retained earnings the account that we close the income out into representing in earnings over the lifetime of the company which have not yet been distributed in the form of not draws but rather uh, dividends right so then we would distribute out of uh, retained earnings would be dividends that are coming out of uh, retained earnings rather than draws. And again, the owner investment would, would be money coming from the owners, which would typically be for the issuance of stock. That would be money coming from the owners into the business. If it was a partnership, you can have similar to an owner's equity account, but you'll have to track it similarly as you would with a with a with a like accounts payable account meaning you kind of have like in the equity section a sub ledger breaking out like the five owners and tracking each of their draws investments and uh, owners equity allocating the net income to them not necessarily evenly but according to their to their partnership agreement which might be even right and this is all, all, whenever I talk about partnerships, this confuses people there because they always say, I'm not going to partner with anyone unless it's a 50 50 down the middle. And it's like, well, that's not how, because <laughs> there might be, they might, it might be makes sense. It might be fair not to be 50 50 if, for example, one person's putting in all the risk with all the money, for example, and the other person's not putting in the money, then they might still be partners. But you might say, okay, we got to kind of even this out somehow because one partner is taking on all the risk versus the other, or one partner is the one doing all the work and the other one's a passive partner not doing any, right? So you can try to, one benefit about a partnership is you could try to accommodate for that by not doing everything 50-50 and trying to figure out who's doing what and what's a fair uh, split and whatnot. But if, if you do that, then you gotta, you gotta track the net income in accordance to the partnership. That's actually more complicated sometimes than even a corporation uh, so just a quick rundown. So we'll get into uh, the future months next time. So next time we'll set up our worksheet to now start in uh, month number two and do our normal transactions, which will record more kind of accrual transactions in month number two.